What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. During the last part, we saw a very different outcome in the Boo Saga, if you could even call it the Boo Saga. Thankfully, Boo's revival was prevented, although that doesn't mean nothing happened during this time. The tournament still went on, and it led to a very important reveal. After years of training and trying to figure out a new power, Goku was finally able to unlock Super Saiyan 4, thanks to some help from Salad. But even though he has this new power, will it be enough to face the next threats that come up? For this video, let's set a like goal of 3,000 likes. If we hit that, I'll continue with another part of this series. I plan to make two or three more parts to finish this series, so drop a like if you're interested in the series being completed. Anyways, let's pick it from here. Now with the Boo Saga over, or at least the tournament I guess, we go into the time skip right before Battle of Gods. Goku would continue trying to work with this power. It doesn't seem too stable right now, but if he keeps practicing with it, he could use it probably as efficiently as his other forms. And obviously it's not just going to be him trying to use this. Gohan and Vegeta kind of want it for themselves. Mainly Vegeta, but also kind of Gohan. He is doing way more training than he would normally here. And seeing this form does get him interested. Vegeta would 100% be pursuing it right away. And not too long after, he probably would be able to unlock it. Once Goku gets a better understanding of it, he could actually give Vegeta some pointers. And over this time skip, Vegeta unlocks it and then eventually Gohan does too. And thankfully there's not too many opportunities for them to use it. There's no threats at the moment. But eventually someone does arrive on Earth that being Beerus. And Salad sees a lot of potential here. He doesn't know if Beerus is a threat or not, but his drones are giving him a really odd reading. He usually has them around regardless, just in case there's a fight going on. And when they try to collect data on Beerus, there's nothing that comes up. His key is untraceable, as well as Whis, that guy with him. From what Vegeta says, he's a god of destruction, and that only gives everyone more ideas. Vegeta's obviously terrified, but Salad sees potential in trying to gain power, and Goku sees a potential fight. And luckily for Goku, that's actually what Beerus is here for, although they do need to find a Super Saiyan God first. But hey, in the meantime, he can at least test out everyone's powers to see if they're even worthy at all. Apparently that purple android guy is part Saiyan, also part Frieza and some other stuff too, so it could be interesting trying to fight him. Salad faces Beerus first. And Beerus noticed that he can grow exceptionally fast during battle. It seems that he's able to analyze all of Beerus' movements, gathering the data that he needs, and Salad explains this too. But beyond that, his raw skill and power is actually enough to give Beerus a nice fight at least while suppressed. Beerus is only giving off a small fraction of his power right now, so he doesn't really expect too much out of these fights anyways. But the fact that they can even keep up with that fraction is good for him. The Super Saiyan 4 is trying to fight him too, and just like with the fight against Salad, they do offer nice fights, but they're not really too great in terms of excitement. Yeah, it's cool to see people this strong that are mortals, but they're nowhere near his level, even when he's suppressed. Salad ends up asking Beerus why he can't sense him or analyze him either. They knew they couldn't sense his key, but Salad's drones can't even pick up on what he's using. Beerus says no mere mortal or mortal technology will be able to sense this, but he has God Key, something that they could probably access if the Super Saiyan God is real. All they need to do now is find out how to do the ritual. And Salad's playing kind of a dangerous game here. He wants his drones to analyze Beerus more and more to give him more data. Maybe he can get some of Beerus' DNA, using it within him. It will be tough, and if Beerus Awis notices the drones, for all he knows he'll just be destroyed on the spot. But luckily there is plenty of DNA left behind, I mean Beerus is eating a bunch of food there. From the leftover plates or whatever, Salad's drones can gather it. He doesn't tell anyone about this though, he wants to utilize this and maybe see if he can get this power somehow. Maybe he can get God Key by doing this, and imagine him having the powers of a God of Destruction, if there even is anything that goes along with it, he still doesn't really know what it entails. He tries to get Whis' DNA too, but that doesn't actually work out, something's really weird about that guy. Eventually the Super Saiyan God ritual is done, and Salad's actually part of it, Videl never actually reveals that she's pregnant, because there's no need, they decide to have Salad try and join it. And since he is part Saiyan, it actually does work. The ritual is done on Goku who becomes the Super Saiyan God. There's not too much interesting to cover about that fight, and more so the important stuff in this arc is everything outside of that. Watching this battle, Salad and Piccolo get pretty interested in this. God Key. They wonder if they can maybe access it somehow. Well at least for Salad, maybe he can access the powers of a Super Saiyan God at least. He does have the ability to use Saiyan powers. But as for Piccolo, they're not really too sure. Could a Namekian harness this power too? And since Salad isn't just a Saiyan and he's all these other things too, what'll it be like for him to use God Key? What'll his God form be like if there is any that he could access? Supposedly he's already perfect, but Jiro never accounted for this. Maybe this isn't his true perfection. Maybe there's stuff beyond this that he could do. Maybe not a completely new form like his semi-perfect form or his perfect form, but he can incorporate the power into this form at least. And with Beerus' DNA, he's able to analyze it and actually access trace amounts of God Key once it's implemented within him. But it actually doesn't do too much else. I could come up with a reason by saying he's not an actual god of destruction so he can't use those powers right away, but really I just don't want to make him too overpowered. Realistically in this setting, I feel like he probably would try and collect all the DNA from Beerus that he could and Whis, but it wouldn't really be an interesting story if he just got Beerus' DNA and Whis' DNA and instantly got Ultra Instinct and all Hakai powers and whatever. It would really ruin the stakes for the rest of the story. It does have some benefit, but it's not going to make him that strong. 
Although if he does actually work towards these powers with Beerus, it actually might help him access new powers easier than if he started from scratch. Not only do Goku and Vegeta go to train with Beerus and Whis, but Salad and Piccolo do as well, and they do go back to Earth from time to time too. They're not just on Beerus' planet 24-7, and it's actually good that Earth isn't left unattended. Of course, right now without them there, Gohan would be the strongest person there, which is still pretty good, but it's nice to have other people just in case. Who knows, what if there's some really strong threat that Gohan can't handle alone? Plus, they do like training with him and everyone else there, so they can't just stay on Beerus' planet the entire time. And this actually turned out to be a really good idea, because now, we're going to be entering a very different Resurrection F. Usually like Battle of Gods, I breeze through this very quickly, but there are going to be some changes here that change how the arc plays out, and it'll be completely different than how it was before. Frieza is eventually revived, and this time he knows not to mess around. Remember back to how easily he was defeated on Namek. Not only does he want to kill those Saiyans on Earth, but there's those other people too. That one Namekian that faced him and that purple guy. He didn't know what species that guy was. But as for that Namekian and those monkeys, they need to die. And he's being a lot more cautious here. Sure, he hates the idea of training, and he could just do a couple months of it and get it over with. But instead, he's going to be more cautious. He's going to train a little bit longer. And the most interesting part is he actually has a new partner this time. It's not just Frieza. They have King Cole join them too. It obviously wasn't too hard to get him. And the two are confident they could probably unlock a new power, something strong enough to not only defeat those Earthlings and Saiyans, but whatever that other guy was too, and that Namekian that Frieza fought. Training begins, and a couple months pass. Not only do they take a little bit longer, but the fact that King Cold is there training with Frieza actually helps the growth. After these few months pass, let's go over to Earth. Salad and Piccolo are back on Earth training. They're out in the middle of nowhere. They do need a lot of space after all. The two start by sparring. Glad to see how both of them have grown. They actually do have a bit of God Key within them now. As for Piccolo, he hasn't figured out how to actually use it in terms of a form or whatever, if there even is a form that he can use. And for Salad, it's a little bit weird. He's been trying to tap into the power of a Super Saiyan God, but it's odd trying to make it work. Maybe it's because he's not really a Saiyan. Of course he does have Saiyan DNA, but his physiology, his body, it's not actually that of a Saiyan. And he has so much other stuff within him too. So in reality, he doesn't really know what he's aiming for. It's a lot of trial and error for the both of them right now. The two of them finish sparring, and they get ready to leave this area just to go and relax somewhere but something catches them both off guard. There's a giant surge of power nearby, and the two of them turn around, but it's already too late. Salad instinctively knocks Piccolo out of the way, and then he's hit head-on by a powerful attack. A massive blast cuts through the area. Piccolo only narrowly avoids it, but he sees Salad standing there with a good chunk of his body now missing. He took some serious damage, and Salad falls to the ground. Piccolo looks around and then sees. Over the horizon, Frieza and King Cold fly towards them. He has no idea what's going on. Frieza's back? As Frieza suspected, the android and the Mechian did grow stronger, had they been the same strength as before, that attack would have been enough to obliterate both of them without any effort. But they were quick enough to react, and it seems he didn't fully do the job with that android. He wonders if the monkeys got just as strong as them too. But whatever, he can't find them anywhere. He doesn't know where they're hiding, but maybe killing these two will coax them to come out of hiding. They land right in front of Piccolo and Salad. Cold allows Frieza to do the honors. Frieza stands over Salad, putting a hand out and charging a blast. It seems he's already half dead anyways. But little does Frieza know, Salad has been feigning this weakness. Now with Frieza right in front of him, he quickly regenerates an arm, striking Frieza right in the chest. And with his other arm, he grabs Frieza's hand and begins crushing it. Frieza then launches a point blank blast to get away from him. Regeneration. Interesting. Salad warns them. The two haven't just gotten stronger in terms of physical strength. They both have been working on brand new techniques. And as for Salad, he's been upgraded in many other ways. They could obviously tell by his form. Frieza can see that he looks very different than how he did on Namek. But they don't care too much. That attack was almost enough to destroy part of Salad. Even if he can't regenerate, they'll just overcome it. But they are going to need to make this quick, so they'll just slaughter everyone, and it's better to do it this way. They start transforming. Their power surge is even higher than it was before. It's insane, and Frieza's is ahead of King Cold by a significant margin. The two are surrounded by a brilliant golden aura, and they undergo a metamorphosis into their golden forms. This might be an issue. Salad and Piccolo power up, getting ready to fight. Salad even goes into Kaioken. Judging by the power that they're giving off, he's not too sure how this is going to go. Frieza and Cold immediately have the upper hand. Salad and Piccolo take a lot of damage from this. And Frieza and Cold are pretty pleased. Yeah, this isn't going as fast as they wanted, but hey, at least they can make these two suffer. And maybe all this energy that they're giving off will draw out those Saiyans. Piccolo and Salad are on the defensive. Their attacks aren't doing too much right now. Maybe if they're just fighting Frieza or Cold individually, the two of them would be enough. But with both of them together, it's too much to handle. They just need to hold out for a bit. Someone will sense this. Either Goku and Vegeta will get here, or even Gohan could show up. And Piccolo says that won't matter. At the rate they're going, they're going to die like this. But Salad says it's not true. He and Piccolo are able to get some distance mid-battle, and Salad quickly tells him what's going on. His drones are analyzing those two, and it seems that their stamina is rapidly depleted. Even though their power is insane, they notice that during battle, they're slowly getting weaker and weaker, and the data shows that they're getting more and more tired out as well. 
and Salad wonders, maybe he can use this power for himself, circumventing whatever issues Frieza and Cole are encountering right now. But obviously the most important thing here is that they're running out of stamina. Maybe they can prolong this battle. They jump back into the fight. Frieza and Cole are actually enjoying themselves. Salad tries to take the brunt of the attacks, and even though he can regenerate, it's not like he's not taking damage. This is still very risky, he's trying to defend Piccolo as much as possible, but if Frieza and Cold Lane attack powerful enough to destroy him, they could completely kill Salad. Then, a massive geyser key ascends from below. It hits both Frieza and Cold directly, and everyone looks down, Gohan standing there in Super Saiyan 4, with both of his arms up. Unlike the other Saiyans, he doesn't have God Key because he hasn't been training with Beerus and Whis, he did have to stay here after all. But with Super Saiyan 4 and his hybrid potential, he's actually gotten a lot stronger still. And the funny thing is too, just in Super Saiyan 4, Gohan actually surpasses Goku and Vegeta right now, although if they go into Super Saiyan God, they're way above him. But still, this makes him a very important asset right here. Frieza and Cold even mock him. He's actually turned into a monkey. That's hilarious. But they stop laughing as soon as the three of them team up. With Gohan here, that actually helps turn the tide of the battle. It's a lot more even than before, and with King Cold and Frieza losing more and more stamina as it goes on, that does cause a lot of issues for them. Piccolo then confronts the two of them. He knows their weakness. They didn't even need the drones. At this point, it's pretty obvious to tell. They're losing more and more stamina as they fight with this form. It doesn't matter how strong they are. Eventually, the three of them will get ahead. I mean, look at Salad too. He has infinite energy. He can keep this going on forever. They can't. Frieza and Cole are pissed off. They saw right through this. But that is to be expected. Although, there is one way to end this really quickly. Of course, it's very unceremonious. But it would be a lot more efficient than what they're doing here. If they can't slaughter them this way, they'll have to do it another way now. The two then jump back from the battle, ascending up into the sky, and they each stick a hand out in front of them. A powerful ball of key begins charging in between both of them. The ground below is beginning to burn up, even the parts that don't have any foliage. The attack grows larger and larger. Everyone feels powerful gust of wind, and an overwhelming heat. The double golden death ball is charged, and they launch it right towards the planet. If this hits Earth, it'll immediately blow up. The three try their best to defend against it, while King Cold and Frieza put more and more power into it. This is bad. It's a struggle between those three and Frieza and Cold, and those three are losing right now. The attack gets closer and closer to the planet. They put more energy into their beams, but it's doing nothing. Their arms are about to give out, and as for Piccolo and Gohan, they're about to run out of energy. But Salad gets an idea. As they strain to push this attack back, Salad then stretches out his tail, to extreme lengths too. It goes underneath the beam struggle, and it's hard to aim, but eventually he does hit something. He stabs King Cold right in the back and as quickly as he can, he tries to drain energy. As he does so, the attack from Frieza and Cold gets less and less powerful, as their beam gets stronger and stronger. With King Cold's power on their side now, they're starting to win this. King Cold tries to get the tail out of his back, and Salad uses this distraction. He splits all the energy up between the three of them, lending some to Gohan and Piccolo. The beams immediately get overloaded, completely eviscerating the blast from Frieza and Cold, and killing King Cold with his own energy. Frieza is able to barely avoid this, but as he jumps out of the way, he's met then by Gohan and Piccolo. Piccolo's behind him and Gohan's in front of him. Not knowing what to do, he charges to Gohan instinctively. Gohan places two fingers on his forehead and begins charging an attack. Just as Frieza's about to hit him, Gohan sidesteps out of the way, and a beam of light bursts through Frieza. Gohan flies over to Piccolo and launches his own Makanko Sapo. The two of them swirl together, finishing off Frieza for good. As Frieza falls to the ground, the two of them launch a Masenko together, erasing whatever's left to him just to make sure the job is done. That was a really close call. They had no warning of these two coming to Earth, especially King Cold as well. Gohan and Piccolo are pretty injured, and as for Salad, he seems okay. But this battle made him actually realize something. Sure, he could regenerate, and he has infinite energy, but he's seen something weird. He has a limit to how much power he can hold. He tells Gohan and Piccolo, the reason he gave King Cold's power to both of them is because he almost overloaded himself. Temporarily, he had a huge increase in power, but had he kept absorbing more energy, it would have been too much. And this worries him. If he does access a godly power like Goku or Vegeta, could his body handle it? I mean, he is partially mechanical after all. He is a bio-android, so he's different from other androids. But still, his body might not be built to handle that type of power. Unlike an organic Saiyan body, he's now concerned. Maybe this is the reason he couldn't access it, he just can't contain the power. Has he reached the limit to how strong he could get? And if so, is there a way to even overcome it? The three of them all stand there, out of breath. It's good that they took victory, but this battle also showcased the limits of their power. Gohan might need to take his training more seriously. He could grow a lot stronger if he spent more time training, even without God Key. As for Piccolo, he needs to figure out a way to enhance his power even more. And as for Salad, he did collect a lot of good data, but now he has a new issue. He thinks he might actually have a limit to how strong he can get. They need to return to Beerus' planet right away. They invite Gohan, but he's gonna stay here. God Key's nice, and maybe he could pick up on it some other time, especially with how many God Key users he associates with, but for now, it seems Earth training will be enough for him. Super Saiyan 4 is pretty good, and while Goku and Vegeta try and access brand new power, Gohan will stick with this. 
and even though they narrowly avoided this threat, it is definitely not the last. Once again, their next threat will be someone they faced before. One of their allies will be turned against them, but we'll have to save that for the next part. This is where we'll leave off for now. So, what did you guys think about this part, and what do you think is going to happen next time? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, and let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of this series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon so you're notified about any future uploads on my channel, including more parts of this series. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.